Hi, I'm Virgil the Doubtful, Supreme Commander of Forces in Africa, and this is the poorly animated Book of Mormon. And we, you and I, together, are in the third chapter of Yakko. I'm staying with it. I'm going to keep calling him Yakko because it's funny. Reminds me of Animaniacs, which does date me a little. But behold, I, Yakko, would speak unto you that are pure in heart. Well, it leaves me out. Guess this episode's over. Sorry, everybody. Look unto God with firmness of mind, and pray unto him with exceeding faith, and he will console you in your afflictions, and he will plead your cause. Plead your cause? To who? And send down justice upon those who seek your destruction. O oh, all ye that are pure in heart, lift up your heads and receive the pleasing word of God, and feast upon his love. That's immature. O oh, all ye that are pure in heart, lift up your hearts and receive the pleasing word of God, and feast upon his love. For ye may, if your minds are firm, forever. That just ends there. I don't know what that means. But woe, woe, woe unto you that are not pure in heart. Oh, he's talking to me now. That are filthy this day before God. For except ye that repent, the land is cursed for your sakes. And the Lamanites, who are not filthy like unto you, nevertheless they are cursed with a sore cursing, shall so scourge you even unto destruction. They are not filthy in the same way, I guess, that the Nephites are. I am... Okay, well, I'm interested to hear about the comparison. And the time speedily cometh, yeah, very speedily, hundreds of years, that except ye repent, they shall possess the land of your inheritance, and the Lord God will lead away the righteous out from among you. I think that was pretty much guaranteed. Behold, the Lamanites, your brethren, whom ye hate because of their filthiness and the cursing which hath come upon their skins, are more righteous than you. That's right, you hate them because they're black spells it right out. For they have not forgotten the commandment of the Lord, which has been given unto our father, that they should have, save it were one wife, and concubines they should have none, and there should not be whoredoms committed among them. So there you go. The Lamanites are better than you, because they don't have lots of wives like the Mormons. And now, this commandment they observe to keep. Wherefore, because of this observance, in keeping this commandment, the Lord God will not destroy them. That's the only reason he won't do it. That's, oh my God. But will be merciful unto them, and one day they shall become a blessed people. Oh, that's, okay. Behold, their husbands love their wives, and their wives love their husbands, and their husbands and their wives love their children, and their unbelief and their hatred toward you is because of the iniquity of their fathers. Well, then, why won't they become less horrible if they're actually nice people. Wherefore, how much better are you than they in the sight of your great creator? I, I don't know. Oh, my brethren, I fear that unless ye shall repent of your sins, that their skins will be <laughs> will be whiter than yours. <laughs> my God. <laughs> their skins will be whiter than yours. Wow. That's amazing. When ye shall be brought with them before the throne of God. That's how God's going to measure you. That's the measurement. When you get to heaven and he's not going to put your soul on a scale to see how heavy it is with sin. He's going to pull out a color wheel and check to see the whiteness of your skin. <laughs> Good. I'm stunned. Wherefore, a commandment I give unto you, which is the word of God, that ye revile no more against them because of the darkness of their skins. Oh, okay, great. Neither shall ye revile against them because of their filthiness, but you shall remember your own filthiness, and remember that their filthiness came because of their fathers. Well, then, why aren't they cured? Why wouldn't they be cured? Wherefore, ye shall remember your children, how that ye have grieved their hearts because of the examples that ye have set before them, and also remember that ye may, because of your filthiness, bring your children into destruction, and their sins be heaped upon your heads at the last day. I don't understand what's going on here. Back and forth, a roller coaster of racism and and horror and not nastiness and whatever oh my brethren hearken unto my words rouse the facilities of your souls arouse the facilities of your souls i like that shake yourselves that ye may awake from the slumber of death and loose yourselves from the pains of hell that ye may not become angels to the devil to be cast into that lake of fire and brimstone which is the second death and now i Jacob spake many more things unto the people of nephi warning them against fornication and lasciviousness and every kind of sin, telling them the awful consequences of them. And the hundredth part of the proceedings of this people, 
which now began to be numerous, cannot be written upon these plates. Oh, we're back to that. But many of their proceedings are written upon the larger plates. The big ones, you know, the big ones. And their wars, and their contentions, and the reigns of their king. I want to read that one. That one sounds way more interesting than this one. These plates, I guess what we're reading now, are called the plates of Yako, and they were made by the hand of Nephi. Oh, that's not good. You should really have learned how to make these plates. And I make an end of speaking these words, and that is the end of the third chapter. And I'm going to move on to the fourth chapter, because I believe it's uh, reasonably short, and we're trying to get through. And I think the fifth chapter is a little bit longer, so that'll probably be its own standalone. We'll see how it goes. Now behold, it came to pass that I, Yako, having ministered much unto the people in word, parentheses, and I cannot write but a little of my words because of the difficulty of engraving our words upon plates. You keep going into how hard it is and how little material you have, but you don't stop putting it on the plates. And we know the things that we write upon plates must remain. But whatsoever things we write upon anything save it be upon plates must perish and vanish away. Very true. But we can write a few words upon plates which will give our children and also our beloved brethren a small degree of knowledge concerning us or concerning their fathers. Now in this thing we do rejoice and we labor diligently to engrave in these words upon plates, hoping that our beloved brethren and our children will receive them with thankful hearts and look upon them that they may learn with joy and not with sorrow, neither with contempt concerning their first parents. He's going on and on about how all they need these plates and they don't have a lot of space, but he has not hesitated to ramble on about it. For in this intent we have written these things that they may know that we knew of Christ. Yeah, we, we cannot forget that we know about him. And we had hope of his glory many hundreds of years before his coming. So they know when he's coming. They know when he's coming. And not only we ourselves had hope of his glory, but also all the holy prophets which were before us. I don't think any of the holy prophets before you knew anything about him. Behold, they believed in Christ. They who? The prophets? I don't think so. And worship the Father in his name, and also we worship the Father in his name. And for this intent, we will keep the law of Moses, the zombie law of Moses, as we mentioned before, it pointing our souls to him. And for this cause, it is sanctified unto us for righteousness, even as it was accounted unto Abraham in the wilderness to be obedient unto the commands of God, in offering up his son Isaac, which is a similitude of God and his only begotten son. Got it. Wherefore, we search the prophets, and we have many revelations in the spirit of prophecy, and having all these witnesses, we obtain a hope, and our faith becometh unshaken. <laughs> Insomuch that what we truly can command in the name of Jesus, and the very trees obey us, or the mountains or the waves of the sea? The trees and mountains and waves obey you in the name of Jesus. What did you do? You have this great power. What did you do with it? Nothing, apparently. Just keep, just keeps, keeps going. Nevertheless, the Lord God showeth us our weakness that we may know that it is by his grace and his great condescensions unto the children of men that we have power to do these things. What things? What did you do with this amazing power? Behold, great and marvelous are the works of the Lord. How unsearchable are the depths of the mysteries of him. And it is impossible that a man should find out all his ways. And no man knoweth of his ways, save it be revealed unto him. Wherefore, brethren, despise not the revelations of God. <sighs> For behold, by the power of his word, man came upon the face of the earth, which earth was created by the power of his word. Wherefore, if God, being able to speak and the world was, and to speak and man was created, Oh, then, why not able to command the earth or the workmanship of his hands upon the face of it according to his will and pleasure? Fair enough. Wherefore, brethren, seek not to counsel the Lord, but to take counsel from his hand. For behold, ye yourselves know that he counseleth in wisdom and in justice and in great mercy over all his works. Wherefore, beloved brethren, be reconciled unto him through the atonement of Christ, his only begotten Son, who doesn't exist yet, but in a several hundred years will, and ye may obtain a resurrection according to the power of the resurrection which is in Christ, and be presented as the first fruits of Christ unto God, having faith, and obtained a good hope of glory in him before he manifesteth himself in the flesh. Not easy to say. Ah, and now, beloved, marvel not that I tell you these things, for why not speak of the atonement of Christ? I don't know, because you've got more important things to worry about right now. And to obtain a perfect knowledge of him. What is there to know? He hasn't come yet as to attain to the knowledge of a resurrection in the world to come. Behold, my brethren, he that prophesieth, let him prophesy to the understanding of men, for the Spirit speaketh the truth and lieth not. Wherefore, it speaketh of things as they really are, and of things as they really will be. Wherefore, these things are manifested unto us plainly for the salvation of our souls. 
But behold, we are not witnesses alone in these things, for God also spake them unto prophets of old. I don't know why we need to know any of this, but awesome. But behold, the Jews were a stiff-necked people, and they despised the words of plainness, and killed the prophets, and sought for things that they could not understand. Wherefore, because of their blindness, which blindness came by looking beyond the mark, they must needs fail. Uh, okay. For God hath taken away his plainness from them, and delivered unto them many things which they cannot understand, because they desired it. And because they desired it, God hath done it, that they may stumble. Wow. And now I, Jacob, am led on by the Spirit unto prophesying. For I perceive by the workings of the Spirit which is in me, that by the stumbling of the Jews they will reject the stone upon which they might build and have safe foundation. I think he means Jesus. But behold, according to the scriptures, this stone shall become the great and the last and the only sure foundation upon which the Jews can build. And now, my beloved, how is it possible that these, after having rejected the sure foundation, can ever build upon it, that it may become the head of their corner? <laughs> behold, my beloved brethren, I will unfold this mystery unto you, if I do not, by any means, get shaken from my firmness in the spirit and stumble because of my over-anxiety for you. Okay, that was the fourth chapter of the book of Jacob, which was a big bunch of fluffy nothing, and started that chapter complaining that he wouldn't have enough space on the plates if he went on and on, and then he went on and on. So there you go. I'm, I'm feeling a little disheartened by Yakko. I had high hopes that a new start would give us some new stuff, but it really hasn't. And uh, although we are, I believe, halfway through this book, so maybe the next one will be more interesting. Uh, chapter 5 next time, and uh, I may be able to wrap up 6 and 7 together. I haven't looked at them. So here's hoping. So if nothing else, two videos in, and we are already halfway through. So until next time, uh, like, subscribe, come back again. And I am, as always, your guide, Virgil.